Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with Golden Opportunities Coaching and the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel. And we, re we return with more of the World Class Championship Wrestling Review Series, uh, specifically October 8th, 1983. And we are, I'm caught up all the way to the beginning of December of 83 and probably will have most of those episodes up this evening overnight. Uh, anyway, they're all here for your listening pleasure, over 80 of them now. Uh, but we move into October 8th, and relatively minor episode, I guess I would say. Um, Buddy Roberts finally shows himself to be bald and, and at peace with it against Johnny Mantell to open the program. Uh, less rerun content than the previous couple of weeks, uh, Mantel a little bit more, uh, comfortable, and, uh, he, Roberts comes to the ring with the wig, is, uh, part of not using the wig, at least part of the match, not all of it, but, uh, he, he certainly has wound up dealing with that, and, well, understand the, the reason to have the wig and then remove it, but he chooses to, and he reveals his baldness, much to the delight of the fans. Um, Mantell on an up and down roller coaster, more up than down as of late. Uh, very basic wrestling style, pure wrestling style, if you will. Hammer locks, head locks, head scissors, that type of thing. Um, Roberts specifically used to gain advantages for the free birds when necessary but he does more singles wrestling without the free birds than uh i originally had thought and so that in itself is kind of interesting for an outside observer um you know staying with the headlocks i would say in this match mantel is portrayed to have more power using headlocks Chin locks, front face locks, and the like. Um, certainly a guy who doesn't want to take any any guff actually does the inside, the bring back in drop spot on Buddy Roberts, and that is unique in and of itself. Uh, and then we move into the uh, latter stages of the match. Roberts has broken things down and has cheated to get there from here. Uh, does hit some rather large body slams, but every time he takes a major risk, he does not get what he wants out of the contest. Double underhook suplex, which is a the butterfly suplex underseen since the era of uh, Bob. Uh, I'm sorry, Bill Irwin. Bob Irwin? No, Bill Irwin. Um. And then the abdominal stretch hook hold by Mantell, who is stopped by the referee. Time limit draw is your decision here. And nobody gained the victory fully. Bill Ratke versus Iceman King Parsons. Parsons, who has been one of the mainstays in world class for this time period. Uh, Ratke, who has uh, had... Managers here and there when it's convenient, but not really given a heavy push, um, is willing to send Parsons out to the arena floor, which, man, looking at that floor, I would not want to crawl into it. Parsons gets back uh, into the ring and uh, does gain a victory rather quickly, much to the chagrin of... Uh, of, of Radke, and, and again, I mean, you've got a lot of, you know, you get a lot of just basic stuff when it comes to King Parsons. Parsons is a guy who, uh, actually going ahead just a little bit, does get a world championship shot, which is really, when you think about it, from a guy who less than a year ago wasn't even in the promotion to challenging for the world championship and being seen as a viable contender, really speaks to the booking talent of whoever put him there. But he wins with the butt-butt maneuver uh, over Bill Radke. And then we move to the, uh, I wouldn't say main event, but the semi-main event. Devastation Incorporated 
versus uh, Chris Adams and David Von Erich. I think this is the first time that we've seen Adams and Von Erich together. Um, you know, certainly a surprise there. Adams always using a bit of uh, the rub whenever he can get it. The Mongol and um, Zukov are the team of the moment. For Devastation Incorporated, so Zukov is seconded at least partially by uh, Skandar Akbar in this incarnation of his career, which uh, a lot of people wouldn't know because it's not heavily hyped. Um, David Von Erich, who's back a little bit, who has, has done, I think, in 83, a couple tours of Japan. Uh, but, um, you know, they work over Zukov quite a bit. And the the baby faces are in control for a good bit of a while, cutting off the ring on, on a Zukov for the majority of the match. Uh, obviously, Adam's known for using holds and uh, submissions, even uses a high knee to get an advantage there, but we return to the tag off to the Mongol, uh, David Von Erich, who has not uh, done that much battle with the Mongol, I don't think, maybe on house shows, but they're not regular opponents here on television, uh, which I think is a, an advantage for a sometimes over bloated project in in terms of who we see on TV over and over and over again. Um, obviously, the Mongol, when he is part of things, does use his power. Uh, we actually see a point where Buck Zumhoff has uh, or uh, Boris Zerk, uh, Zukov. There we go. Not Buck Zumhoff. Totally different guy. Um, is is holding David in a bear hug, and the Mongol switches in on the move after a little while. So that's interesting in and of itself. The Akbar tandem cuts the ring off on David. This is really the first major time that that uh, Akbar gets his hands on one of the Von Eriks, and uh, that goes round and round and round as uh, Akbar finally does interfere and gets placed in the claw. And so, uh, no real finish to the match, but Akbar claims that he's going to get the claw banned from wrestling, going to get the Von Erichs banned from wrestling. Uh, then we go into another of the Von Erichs Freebird feud variations. This one, Kerry Von Erich and Terry Gordy. Gordy, who has since used the, some would say, Adriatic Spike, the Oriental Spike, but regardless... Uh, Kerry does more of a brawling style with, uh, Gordy, and Gordy, who was probably one of the best big men at the time, uh, stomps around and sells quite a bit for Kerry, uh, never really a definitive advantage one way or the other, both guys kind of take 50-50 in the match, uh, Terry does spill Kerry Von Erich out to the floor, and they brawl out there, including a body slam by Terry on the floor. Uh, back in the ring, the the battle continues. Terry has to go back out to get Gordy, and uh, body slams him on the floor. So they've kind of traded slams on the floor, so to speak, and the sportatorium floor doesn't look that sanitary, to say the very least. Lots of cups and debris lying around. On the arena floor, of course, that arena held, I don't know, 1,200, 1,500. It doesn't hold a great deal of cal of uh, people. And then Gordy comes back in, tries to uh, slow the match down with chin locks and the like. Uh, the referee questioning whether or not he's engaging in choking, and that leads to trouble in and of itself. Gordy... Not above cheating, but going to deny it until he's directly caught. Uh, we then see the claw on Gordy and uh, the referee having to try to break the claw post-match. And that continues the, the edge there. Uh, it is uh, Dave... Uh, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, David, who makes his way down to try and help his brother uh, as Gary is uh, affected by the spike. So we see more of the spike. We see more of Von Eriks and Free Birds, and we move into the midpoint of October of 1983 here in the World Class Review Series.